Hey, second graders. By now you should have your packets. We are on day three of your new packet that you picked up from school either earlier today or yesterday. Today we're going to be identifying two dimensional shapes and your packet will help you out with this. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your teachers. We are happy to help you. Let's get started with math, shall we? Let's take a look at our packet for day three, April 29th. Unlock the problem. I'll read the problem to you. At Memorial School, students have half an hour for morning recess and 17 minutes for a lunch break. How much free time do they have in all? How much more time for lunch than recess do they have? Second graders, this is a two-part problem. First, we need to identify the information we know. I'll underline it. You should write it down in this first box. What do we know? What is important? We know that morning recess is half an hour. Second graders, what is another, word, another way that we could say half an hour? Half an hour is the same as 30 minutes. We also know that they have 17 minutes for lunch. So the important information is that recess is 30 minutes and lunch is 17 minutes. Write that information down here. Press pause so that you have time to write it down. Then press play when you are ready to move on to the second box. In the second box, we're asked, what are we trying to find? What is the question? And what is the unit? So now we're focused on the second box. We are trying to find out how much free time they have in all, which means how much time do they have for lunch and recess put together? We are also trying to find out how much more time they have for lunch than recess. So what is the difference between the 30 minutes and the 17 minutes? Pause here and write that information down in this box. When you are ready, press play. The next part asks, what is the unit? The unit in this case is minutes. Write down minutes right here. Press pause so that you can fill this all out and then press play when you're ready to move on to the third box. In the third box, it asks, how will we use the information to solve this problem? Since this is two problems and it's first asking us how much they have in all, we will first add. Then we will subtract because it's asking how much more time or the difference between lunch and recess. They have half an hour for recess and 17 minutes for lunch. So first you will add 30 plus 17. Then you will subtract 30 minus 17. It will be two problems, so you'll need to solve it sort of halfway down the page. One to add and one to subtract. When you're solving, make sure that you show your work so we know exactly what you are doing. Press pause to solve and then come back. Now we need to answer in a complete statement. 
Remember, a complete sentence says the whole answer. Since there are two questions, how much time do they have in all? And how much more time for recess than lunch do they have? We need to answer this. So my first answer might say, they have blank minutes in all. And my second answer might say, they have blank more minutes for recess than for lunch. Make sure that you answer this question completely and correctly and that you have two sentences down here. I know you can do it. Press pause until you are done. Take a picture of this work and send it to your teacher. Then come back and press play. All right, second graders, time to practice some fluency. Are you ready? I'm gonna give you a number of ones. I want you to make as many tens as you can and then tell me how many tens and maybe how many ones. If there are no ones, then just say the tens. Are you ready? 10 ones equals how many tens? 10 ones equals one ten. Good. 100 ones equals how many tens and 10 ones? This is tricky. In this case, because we are taking 10 ones away, it only equals nine tens. Nine tens is 90 plus 10 ones is 100. Challenging. 120 ones equals how many tens and 10 ones? So remember first take those 10 ones away. How many tens are left over? 11 tens are left over with 10 ones. One hundred forty ones equals how many tens? No tens left, no ones left over. So one hundred forty ones, remember we can just take that zero away and it equals fourteen tens. Nice! Two hundred ten ones equals how many tens and ten ones? We're just trying to find two hundred, so that equals 20 tens, challenging with 10 ones left over. Remember, this should be fast, fast, fast math. When you're doing this, just try your hardest so that you are understanding it as quick as you can. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your teachers. We are happy to help. Let's keep going. Polygon. A polygon is a closed figure with three or more straight sides. This is a new word for shape. A polygon has straight sides and every side needs to meet exactly where the two other sides are with the corners. So this shape is a polygon. It has three sides. One, two, three, and it has three angles. One, two, three. This word or this shape is a polygon. What is the word that we already know that it is? It's a triangle. A triangle is a polygon with three sides and three angles. Let's try another one. When we look at this triangle, we see an angle. An angle is where the sides meet. There's one, there's the other, and here's the third. 
An angle is another word for corner. This is a triangle. How many angles are there on this shape? There are three angles. How many sides are on this shape? There are three sides. Remember, a polygon is a closed figure with three or more straight sides. Every side meets exactly two other sides at the corners. And a polygon always has the same number of angles as sides. How many corners does this shape have? Or angles does this shape have? It has one, two, three, and four. Those are the angles. How many sides does it have? It has one, two, three, four. This shape is called a quadrilateral. A quadrilateral has four corners and four sides. This polygon has the same number of angles as it does sides. Let's count the angles. One, two, three, four, five. How many sides? One, two, three, four, five. It has five angles. It has five sides. This shape is called a pentagon. Let's do one more shape. Let's count how many angles this polygon has. One, two, three, four, five, six. If it has six angles, we also know that it has six sides. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. This shape is called a hexagon. So we've learned about pentagons, quadrilaterals, triangles, and now hexagons. Today, you will be identifying these shapes based on their attributes in your worksheet. Let's take a look at a problem. Here are the words up at the top in the word box. Let's remember how many each of these shapes has. How many sides does a hexagon have? A hexagon has six sides. How many sides and angles does a quadrilateral have? A quadrilateral has four sides. How many sides does a triangle have? A triangle has three sides. How many sides does a pentagon have? A pentagon has five sides. 
Look at problem A. So A has four sides. Which of these words would we write under A? Because it has four sides and four angles, we would write quadrilateral under A. A quadrilateral has four sides and four angles. B should be easy. Let's count the angles first. One, two, three. This has three angles. Let's count the sides. One, two, three, and three sides. What do you think this is? It's a triangle. Good. Let's look at C. Let's count the angles first. One, two, three, four, five angles. And let's count the sides. One, two, three, four, five sides. Hexagon has six, pentagon has five. So below C, we would write pentagon. Good work. Here are some challenging shapes. Pause this here and see if you can figure out what we would name each of these shapes. Okay, let's try some more challenging ones. Here we have the word box at the bottom of the page. Do you see it? Hexagon, quadrilateral, triangle, pentagon. I'm gonna know how many each si or each shape of sides and angles it has. A hexagon has six. A quadrilateral has four. A triangle has three, and a pentagon has five. Remember, it's the same number of sides and angles. So you don't need to count each side or each angle. Instead, you can count just sides or just angles. Let's count the angles for G. One, two, three, four. What would this shape be? If it has four angles, it would be a quadrilateral. It's really hard for um, my computer to type right now or to write on this right now. So I'm just going to write quad. But you know what should go there. Let's count this one. Let's count the sides here. One, two, three, four, five, six. If it's six, it's a hexagon. Again, I'm just going to write hex because it's hard to write on my computer right now. Let's try I. One, two, three, four, five. So it's a pentagon. Good. By counting the sides or the shape or the angles, you are able to label the shape. Good work. Should we try one more? I want you to take a look at these shapes on your own. Pause here and see if you come up with the same answers that I'll come up with. Did you get the same answers I got? Both J and K are quadrilaterals because they have four sides and four angles. L is a triangle because it has three sides and three angles. 
Notice that J and K are not the same shape, but they are still called the same thing because they have the same attributes. Shapes don't always need to look the exact same to have the same label. Knowing that, let's explain why both polygons A and B are pentagons. Remember, a pentagon means that it has five angles and five sides. Let's make sure that both of these shapes have five angles and five sides. One, two, three, four, five angles. One, two, three, four, five sides. So in this case, A and B are both polygons that are pentagons because they have five sides and five angles. Note that they do not have to be the exact same shape to be called the same thing. So polygon C and D are both triangles. Why? They are both called triangles because even though they're different sizes, they have three sides and three angles, which is how we would identify a triangle. Today's work goes along the same ideas. First, you're going to label the shapes with the correct word. Use this slideshow to help you out. Then you're going to explain why the polygons are the same name. And then you're going to draw your own hexagon, quadrilateral, triangle, and pentagon. This can feel challenging. If you have any questions, please let us know. We are happy to help. These are new shapes and we're just learning all about them. Remember, your shapes don't have to be perfect. They just have to have the same number of sides and angles. Once you've done this, take a picture and send it to your teachers. We can't wait to see your work. Have a happy Wednesday.